First question, and this is an easy one to answer, I think. Why are your speed limits so bloody slow? I, I was there and I was doing this mountain ride and it was like 55 before the mountains and then in the mountains is a big sign said must go down to 25. I'm like, what oh, is really? this? Yeah, 65 is kind of the norm, I would say, on the freeway systems, the highway. Uh -huh. 65, and I've said this a lot in my videos, I don't really like to ride on the freeway because the people that are on their phones or they're weaving i mean they're literally going in and out of lanes and it's like you don't want to mix that with a 300 pound motorbike so i try to avoid the highways i, I can do it on my bike but uh -huh. i just prefer to say off the, the highways and i mean it's really not if you're on the road anywhere there's always that chance right but um i think i lessen it by staying off the highways yeah you, you don't find the speed limits too slow sometimes Sometimes I do on the back roads, like I've had people comment on if I'm going over 25 in like a residential zone where there's <laughs> houses and stuff. Tell me, uh, people will let me know, trust me. Uh, like, well, you're going 25 or you're going 35 and a 25. And I'm like, you know, so it's so, it's so easy to do because when you're riding, sometimes it's hard to get the sensation how fast you're really going. Mm -hmm. And so 25 is pretty slow, but for the most part, I think most roads, if it's not a posted speed limit, I think the general rule is 35 miles per hour, which is pretty slow. But I just ride, I ride casually. You know, you got the guys on the sport bikes that, that you like to open it up and get on them 55. I think the bypass right near my home is 55. It's not a freeway, but it's, it's like a bypass from the major roads. And sometimes you can, those are 55. I think that's pretty pretty doable here what they do um is they don't check okay they don't see how fast you're going but what will happen for example in one section uh there's an expressway which goes south called the number 64 and in some sections there's a camera that'll take your the picture of your bike or your car going into it and then time you how long it takes to exit a certain area so you gotcha. if, if it's if you should be doing it in 10 minutes but you do it in six then you get a okay. ticket in the mail. I got a ticket once in the mail from for uh, it was a speed trap. They later found out and they gave us all our money back. Believe it or not, but there was a speed trap that went from like, yeah, it was crazy, like fifty five to thirty five, like immediately, mm -hmm. and you had really no warning. And the, they sent me a picture, uh, something in the mail with the picture of our SUV, and you could see the brake lights on. I was slowing down, but they get you that quickly. And, um, I went to fight it, but they, at that time they didn't do anything. So they got enough complaints and finally they made everybody uh, get their money back because they considered it a speed trap. Here's one for you. And this is something uh, that, um, even Harley. Okay. It was involving Harley Davidson that even Harley Davidson riders in Taiwan could not understand was that whole Bud Light thing nobody here could understand it and most people here were saying why don't they just go and ride and don't care what the companies do you have a motorcycle go and ride it stop bitching and complaining their pr marketing people just ignore them yeah so th that was a big deal here in this country when bud light they did a commercial for marketing mm -hmm. they hired a marketing girl that um they that did a commercial with a transgender person uh, who, and I don't know the, I don't know the lifestyle, but here in this, in this country, there, it's a big deal about transgender. Uh, you, you either have the people that accept it or don't accept it. The big, big divide there. Mm -hmm. So Bud Light did this commercial that featured a transgender person drinking a Bud Light in um, Dillon Mulvaney, I think. Um, and it just, wow, all these people just blew it up that didn't, that they, they can't accept that yet, you know? So we have a big divide right now still, and it, it may take a long time to get over that, but it's kind of a, um, about control. Uh, I don't know why, if people want to be who they are, I'm, as long as you're not hurting anyone or hurting society, why not, you know? But some people can't accept that yet. Mm -hmm. So, but like, um, I, 
don't know if they fired her or not, but it they they took a big hit for that, and nobody and they were boycotting Bud Light like around the country. You couldn't even buy it. I mean, nobody would buy it. They were giving it away. I mean, it's just just because of that one commercial. See, that was weird because uh, I know that some of the Hardy, the real hardcore Hardy channels, at the time were were talking about that. And friends of mine who are Hardy writers here and even on the Hardy clubs on their Facebook pages, they couldn't understand what what's the big deal? Does it you you have a bike, go ride it. It doesn't matter what they do. If you don't want to drink their beer, don't drink their beer. It doesn't matter. Other people will. They they couldn't they they you see that that kind of issue here in Taiwan, this is not what divides Taiwan. You know what divides Taiwan? And again, it's a very what divides Taiwan is not issues like that. It's by issues of those who don't want to have a relationship with China and those that want to have a closer relationship with China. That's what divides Taiwanese. These other issues, nobody could care a hoot about. Yeah, that would be refreshing if that would happen here, but I'm not sure. I guess a lot of Harley riders here are, I, I didn't know that that was the big deal for them about the Bud Light. Um, Oh, some of, some of the Hardy Davidson channels, the stuff they were saying, like, oh, my God. Yeah, I can imagine that. But, you know, you, Harley is not only a bike, it's a culture, you know. And so you have to understand the people that ride, not everyone, but a lot of Harley riders fit that culture mode. You know, the hardcore leather manly men and, you know, just it. I don't know if I'm even right, saying the right terms, but it's it's definitely its own culture. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think the majority of them could not accept the fact that, that somebody might be transgender. I, I don't know. Which sport bike do you like, if you had to choose one right now? Well, it's a funny story. Um, I was really into the Ninja line, the Kawasaki 400. Mm -hmm. um, ever since I rode a Ninja 400, I loved it. I mean, that was just at a demo day, and I have a video on it. Um, and I like that bike a lot. And then I, recently I met a guy that owns a dealership right here in town who raced. He, he did motor racing, uh, AMA on the track, right? And he's a lot of Ducati. That's why I was asking the question the other day. That Ducati that I video, that was actually in his shop, and that was the bike that he rode on the track. Mm -hmm. um, his name's Les. He actually participated in the Daytona 200 years ago. So he's a race-minded guy, and I've never ridden – and a, is it called an Aprilia? Aprilia? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Aprilia. Ducati. Uh, I want to, and I might have that opportunity this year with him, but that'll be fun. But I've always liked the Ninja. I guess in the the BMW, was it the M1000R? Mm -hmm. That was, I think, just a little bit too much um, for me. It it had, it was just way powerful. You got to be careful on those big super bikes, but. Um, I think the 400 was intriguing because it was so light and nimble. It kind of reminded me of the lightness of my bike. It might be a little heavier, but with more man maneuverability mm -hmm. and power. <laughs> my only problem that I had with the Ducati, and the only reason why I didn't like it, even though like, I loved, I loved the bike, was that unlike my uh, my Honda or my Yamaha MT10. If I go into the city and ride at low speeds because I'm in the city, it was fine. With the Ducati, it just didn't feel comfortable in the city doing stop, go, stop, go, stop, go all the time. Do right. you know what I mean? You're right. Yeah. And that's why I like the little automatic I have because, you know, that, that has, when I live, I live in a very populated, like suburbia type. It's outside of the city of Cincinnati, but there's still a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So... A lot of traffic, a lot of cars. If you watch any of my videos, you see that the, the, the area that I'm in is very populated unless I drive way out into the country. So the stopping and going and the, the quick turning and stuff, it's perfect for a little bike like that, you know? Do, do, you see, do you see many on the road? No, I don't see many scooters or automatics. Once in a great while in the summer, I might see one or two. It's just not a very popular thing. And that... Maybe because I live in Ohio, which is only, like I said, four, four or five months, maybe four good months of riding opportunities. So mm -hmm. you see the scooters 
more in the warmer like climates than states like Florida and California. You see them a lot more than Ohio. It's just not popular in Ohio, I don't think.